Hi everyone. Welcome to the first deep dive video of the wired intersection. Today, we will talk about the Schumann resonance, a concept shown in the anime, portrait as a baseline way of communication, and a tool to understand the collective unconscious. The Schumann resonances, SR, are a set of spectrum peaks in the extremely low frequency, ELF, portion of the Earth's electromagnetic field spectrum. Schumann resonances are global electromagnetic resonances, generated and excited by lightning discharges in the cavity formed by the Earth's surface and the ionosphere. In the anime, the Schumann resonances would be used along with the Protocol 7, to extend the ways we could communicate with each other, as a part of Iris' plan to take down the barrier between the wired and the physical world. In 1893, George Francis Fitzgerald perceived that the upper layers of the atmosphere must be fairly good conductors. Assuming that the height of these layers is about 100 kilometers above ground, he estimated that oscillations, in this case the lowest mode of the Schumann resonances, would have a period of 0.1 second. Because of this contribution, it has been suggested to rename these resonances Schumann Fitzgerald resonances. However, Fitzgerald's findings were not widely known as they were only presented at a meeting of the British Association for the Advancement of Science, followed by a brief mention in a column in Nature. Lightning discharges are considered to be the primary natural source of Schumann resonance excitation. Lightning channels behave like huge antennas that radiate electromagnetic energy at frequencies below about 100 kHz. These signals are very weak at large distances from the lightning source, but the Earth ionosphere waveguide behaves like a resonator at ELF frequencies and amplifies the spectral signals from lightning at the resonance frequencies. Then, in 1952, Winfried Otto Schumann, professor at the Technische Hochschule München, Germany, published several papers postulating the resonances of extremely low frequency ELF waves in the Earth ionosphere waveguide excited by lightning discharges. His idea was composed of three topics: one, the propagation of electromagnetic waves in a spherical cavity; two, the Earth ionosphere system acting as a waveguide; and three, excitation by lightning discharges. Otto studied electrical engineering at the Technische Hochschule Karlsruhe between 1905 and 1909, now named Universität Karlsruhe, the first German polytechnic, nowadays equivalent to a technical university, and worked subsequently as assistant to the founder of its Institute of Electrical Engineering, Engelbert Arnold. During this time, Schumann prepared his doctoral thesis, on the talks of the damper winding of a multiphase synchronous machine at small pendulum oscillations in parallel operation, under Arnold's guidance, until his death in November 1911, and earned his doctorate degree, D.R., after his Viva Voce in 1912. After that, for distinct periods can be distinguished in the scientific career of Winfried Otto Schumann. The first started with his dissertation and ended with his appointment as full professor in Munich and was mainly dedicated to topics in high-voltage engineering. From the beginning of his professorship in Munich, 1924, until 1951, the second period, he worked on discharge phenomena in highly ionized gases, plasmas, and also on wave propagation therein. The third period, from 1952 to about 1957, was devoted to investigations of the propagation of ELF waves in the cavity between the Earth's surface and the lower ionosphere. After 1958 and extending after his retirement he worked mainly on problems of the motion of electrical charges under the influence of low-frequency electromagnetic fields. Additionally, he served for several years as a member of the steering committee of the Deutsches Museum in Munich, one of the world's largest museums for natural sciences and technology, and as a member of the administrative board of the Bavarian Broadcasting Service, Bayerischer Rundfunk. Some postings on the internet and even some Schumann resonance-related articles in the scientific literature are still spreading the rumor that the Schumann resonances had been originally suggested by the famous inventor and experimenter Nikola Tesla. Unfortunately, almost none of these publications gives any citation to a relevant Tesla publication for their claim, 
and the legend of Nikola Tesla being the true prophet of the Schumann resonances still persists. Scientists discovered they could also detect these resonances using NASA's Vector Electric Field Instrument, VEFI, aboard the U.S. Air Force's Communications Navigation Outage Forecast System, CNOFS, satellite. In a paper published on May 1, 2011, in the Astrophysical Journal, researchers describe how this new technique could be used to study other planets in the solar system as well, and even shed light on how the solar system formed. The frequency of Schumann resonance depends not only on the size of the planet but on what kinds of atoms and molecules exist in the atmosphere because they change the electrical conductivity, says Fernando Simois, the first author on this paper and a space scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt. The Schumann resonances, SR, are electromagnetic oscillations of the Earth ionosphere cavity at frequencies of 7.83, 14, 20, 26, 33, 39, and 45 Hertz. The long-term monitoring of the Schumann phenomenon has recently drawn attention, not least from the space geophysics community. SR measurements and analysis provide information on the planetary thunderstorm activities, the properties of lower ionosphere layers, the Earth's surface and atmosphere temperature variations, and the properties of earthquakes as well as on the studies of other celestial bodies. The detection of SR is a complex procedure that employs the limited energy generated and dissipated by the global lighting activity. This total energy is then smeared inside the huge volume of the Earth ionosphere cavity providing electric and magnetic field components. Hardware imperfections can significantly reduce the performance of the system. To improve the signal-to-noise ratio, senior, it is necessary to use specialized sensors and electronic equipment. Especially in the ELF band, where Schumann resonances lie, very few works give details about measurement equipment used regarding electrical and magnetic antennas, the analog front end, and the data acquisition module. In the observation system of ULF-ELF emissions at Nakatsugawa, the signal observed by the NS sensor, each coil consists of perm alloy of 1.2 m long with 100,000 turns of the copper wire, is fed to a preamplifier, then to a low-pass filter of 10 and 30 Hz and main amplifier, stored on DL-708 data recorder and saved on a hard disk. Apart from the meteorological purposes, there is some research trying to understand other impacts that the SR can have on our bodies. One of the scientific papers is called, The Subjective and Objective Improvement of Non-Invasive Treatment of Schumann Resonance in Insomnia, a Randomized and Double-Blinded Study. In this study, it is explained that electromagnetic fields can affect the human brain and sleep, and the extremely low-frequency electromagnetic field, Schumann resonance, may have the potential to reduce insomnia symptoms. The purpose of the study was to investigate the responses of patients with insomnia to a non-invasive treatment, Schumann resonance, SR, and to evaluate its effectiveness by subjective and objective sleep assessments. About 70% of the subjects were women, with an average age of 50 plus or minus 13.38 years and an average history of insomnia of 9.68 plus or minus 8.86 years. We found that in the SR sleep device group, objective sleep measurements, sleep onset latency, SOL, and total sleep time, TSD, and subjective sleep questionnaires, SOL, TSD, sleep efficiency, sleep quality, daytime sleepiness, and sleep satisfaction were significantly improved after using the SR sleep device. In the placebo device group, only such subjective sleep improvements as PSQI and sleep satisfaction were observed. Another study called Ground-Based Investigations to Support Human and Mammalian Studies Beyond Low Earth Orbit, released in 2021, writes about the effects of the Schumann resonances in other aspects of our body. Observations relating physiological responses to weekly energetic phenomenon are intriguing. But they become even more so in view of NASA's human exploration plans. In this context the Schumann resonances take center stage. While the orbit of the ISS is low enough that it is still influenced by the Schumann resonances, 
the moon is clearly far beyond their influence. What about the Apollo-era astronauts? They certainly experienced a lack of Schumann resonances while on the moon. But, given the short duration of these missions and other factors, effects would have been difficult to discern. Now, since NASA is on the brink of returning astronauts to the moon for much longer duration missions, the question, what happens to human physiology beyond the reach of the Schumann resonances, becomes relevant. In preparation for NASA's new moon missions, investigations of the Schumann resonances and human physiology, via Earth-based studies, is especially warranted and timely. Other alternative institutions see the Schumann resonances as a key to anti-aging, better learning and memory, balanced hormones and so on. But further studies are needed in order to verify these claims and the potential benefits of Schumann resonance exposure. HARP was aimed at studying the properties and behavior of the ionosphere. The ionosphere stretches roughly 50 to 400 miles above Earth's surface, right at the edge of space. Along with the neutral upper atmosphere, the ionosphere forms the boundary between Earth's lower atmosphere, where we live and breathe, and the vacuum of space. Operation of the research facility was transferred from the United States Air Force to the University of Alaska Fairbanks on August 11, 2015, allowing HARP to continue with exploration of ionospheric phenomenology via a land-use cooperative research and development agreement. HARP is the world's most capable high-power, high-frequency transmitter for study of the ionosphere. The HAARP program is committed to developing a world-class ionospheric research facility consisting of the Ionospheric Research Instrument, a high-power transmitter facility operating in the high-frequency range. The IRI can be used to temporarily excite a limited area of the ionosphere for scientific study. A sophisticated suite of scientific or diagnostic instruments that can be used to observe the physical processes that occur in the excited region. Observation of the processes resulting from the use of the IRI in a controlled manner will allow scientists to better understand processes that occur continuously under the natural stimulation of the sun. Scientific instruments installed at the HAARP observatory can also be used for a variety of continuing research efforts which do not involve the use of the IRI but are strictly passive. These include ionospheric characterization using satellite beacons, telescopic observation of the fine structure in the aurora and documentation of long-term variations in the ozone layer. Schumann resonance is something real and it obviously has effects on human physiology and its concepts were adapted in the anime as a way to, along with the Protocol 7, enhance the way people could communicate in the real world. Well, that's it for today's video. If you like the content, make sure to subscribe, comment your thoughts and share the channel with other lane enthusiasts. Come back soon, and let's all love lane together.